So I just recall what we uh, had yesterday. So uh, what we had um, talk about uh, last week. So if we have complex algebraic variety, uh, smooth complex algebraic variety, and to get a function. Just uh, polynomial function, and um, mm, uh, it has. Uh, and as, uh, right now, I make some small assumption, which is no, uh, not relevant. I assume that uh, f is a proper map. And also, uh, uh, last week I considered a case of pair, and uh, and devices x is empty. Uh, I consider uh, uh, integration of chains with boundary on D, but uh, I'll skip for a moment this thing, so, so it's a kind of minimal situation. Uh, and uh, in, s in this case, we get finite set of critical values. Whose elements I denote something like zi. Uh, this is a critical, critical values, and uh, and also mm, mm, what I have for any uh, value of Planck constant, which is just non-zero complex number, I define the Ram homology uh, with uh, depending on Planck constant of x of h is the same as the Ram homology without Planck constant divided by f of h bar. And uh, it's hyper homology of x with the risky topology. And we can see the forms. And as a differential, we can uh, write as hd plus df or d plus df. By h, uh, divided by h bar, and there's isomorphism in just the scale on forms between such homology. Ah, so we get this form, and, and there's a comparison isomorphism uh, that's, that's uh, this drum homology uh, is amorphic to. Something which you could call it topologically, some Betty version uh, of XF tensor by C, uh, where, where this H Betty. By the way, is there a relation between using notation H bar and, and Planck constant? Is there some? Yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. It's eventually, it will be to relate to quantum mechanics, yeah. And it will be small parameter in quantum mechanics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not, it's not accidental. It's homology of pair X, and you consider kind of topological homology. We rescale my function by H bar and take preimage of uh, minus infinity, or you take a number with sufficiently negative real part. Okay, that was. Uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. So, uh, uh, so now I'll speak about some another comparison isomorphism. Which is, uh, which uh, uh, kind of between Betty and kind of topological and topological homology, but uh, in different uh, kind of Betty global and Betty local. Mm. What do I mean here? Uh, so again, recall that for any, if you consider any disk in C, with, uh, uh, and a, a boundary point on the disk, uh, and I assume that this boundary of my disk doesn't uh, intersect a critical value set. I, 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 I associated a maybe Z graded uh, group, ADB, uh, which was 
cohomology with all possible degrees of I can see the preimage of the disk and preimage of the marked point on the boundary. Oh, so I get uh, such things. In particular, uh, one can make uh, very small disks uh, around critical points for any critical value and for any argument in R mod 2 by Z. I, I, uh, I have oops. I have a, I have a disk. Uh, have a disk will be some disk with center centered at z i, and radius is very small. Yeah, yeah, but uh, let's take round disk from in this example. It's uh, it's uh, with very small radius, and point B will be. The i plus mm, exponent point in this argument uh, theta. Yeah, so I get this this special uh, d whatever z i r whatever. I get d z i r and beta depending on theta. Uh, and, uh, and this thing I, I just denote by cohomology of beta cohomology of uh, uh, depending on point z i and theta. Maybe z i theta. Yeah, it, it, it's just notation for the small disks. And what was this in other comparison isomorphism? So the uh, the claim is that if my Planck constant that doesn't belong to the finite union of uh, what's called Stokes rays, uh, uh, in fact, the condition is our argument of h bar is not equal to arguments of difference between any two critical values. Uh, so the i and j are in my critical values. <coughs> yeah, so we get typically some picture like this. We get few finitely many rays. Uh, then we get canonical isomorphism uh, depending on h bar. Between what? Between a global cohomology and a direct sum of all critical points of a, a local cohomology with the argument uh, you take argument of uh, uh, h bar plus pi, kind of rotate by 180 degrees. Uh, ah, so, so what is the isomorphism? It's, it's almost obvious. So you get your various uh, critical points. Now, for example, this will be direction of uh, h bar, slightly rotated, and now I take opposite points. I, I consider cohomology of pair for this disk. This is this um, base point, and this is uh, identif identified with global cohomology of pair. Uh, essentially, one can understand like this: to calculate the global cohomology of pair, one can take very large this containing everything and that take pre-image relative to pre-image of uh, this part. And then one can contract it to union of uh, such things without changing homology. So it will be identification between one to another. 
Yeah, so the only thing which we need that, uh, that we, do, we don't have, uh, this all rays will be uh, distinct. Then we have no problem at all. Okay. So, so the question, what happens if uh, H bar uh, depend, uh, varies continuously crosses uh, Stokes ray? Ah, so, so in this H bar plane, we get uh, many rays, and suppose it's H bar uh, moves and start to cro uh, 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 cross uh, Stokes ray. Uh, then we get isomorphism a little bit before the crossing, a little bit after the crossing. We get we get two isomorphisms, kind of for H, kind of. Uh, 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 um, if you change h bar a little bit, the spaces are canonically identified. This lattice is, is topologically. So you get two isomorphisms. Kind of h beta kind of global to h beta local. I mean, this stuff. And so you can combine, you get automorphism. of this direct sum okay now how to how to understand this isomorphism. Um, so this automorphism, it's very simple. Yeah, so it's again, I just have some direction of H bar. Now H bar lies on a Stokes rate, means that there is a line on which uh, parallel to H bar, on which you have at least two critical values. Maybe you have several such lines. Uh, maybe we have another parallel, parallel line. Maybe another get one. Yeah, so get. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> don't really draw, draw it's terribly parallel. Yeah, so imagine picture uh, like this. Um, uh, so the, uh, I it's clear that if, if you get this automorphism, it will uh, act on contribution for each line separately. Yeah, so the different uh, parallel lines will not talk to each other. Uh, and uh, uh, the picture is the following. If you uh, rotate a little bit each bar, you get picture. This maybe I just choose more different color. It's kind of yeah. If you rotate each bar in one direction, that all these rays will will become distinct in one way, or if you rotate to another direction, you get they distinct in another ray, way. Um, So what, what happens is here, for every uh, line which is parallel to each bar and containing at least two, uh, one as well, uh, critical values, uh, you get certain isomorphism. So the line which I draw uh, when I have this line, uh, I just uh, I have several points staying here and called something like ZE1, ZE2, ZE3, 
okay, IK. It's, it's uh, um, critical values which belong to one of this line. I get I, I get an uh, get an isomorphism. So direct sum from j equal one to k of this uh, local thing. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, theta will be argument of h bar plus pi. Mm, I get an isomorphism with itself. I get, I get automorphism. And um, uh, uh, the claim that this I, uh, 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 I claim this automorphism <coughs> it's kind of uh, preserves the filtration's identity on the filtration. So it will be j equal 1 to j equal k. I have a uh, uh, And to get some, uh, mm, uh, you get a low, di low, low diagonal matrix with identity on the diagonal. Uh, uh, why it is so? Uh, it's it's sorry? Right? It's, fi it's finite. Yeah, it's a finite dimensional uh, <laughs> lattices uh, groups, and its matrix is kind of integer coefficients. Yeah. If maybe your, your, your conventions are not, uh, uh, it depends on. Yeah, no, even your symmetric also has integer coefficients, yeah. No, but the question is how the ordering, so when you draw the picture. H ah, no, beca because I said that h bars ordered in this way, so it means that I order, I have, the, it's oriented line, yeah. Because I have h bar and the line is parallel to h bar, so it's automatically directed. Now, if I choose h bar in opposite direction, I order them in opposite way. Yeah. Ah, okay, so you say that the contribution of h bar goes to the inverse, go to something which involves this plus correction in the lower. Yes, yes. In yes. Only in the lower thing, and this you are supposed to see topologically by yes, yes, seeing yeah. how things move around. Yeah, the, the picture is the following. It's kind of easier, easier to see, uh, rep go with, uh, work with homology in this case. And uh, and in the homology, it's clear that uh, uh, you, you get direct sum decomposition, but uh, 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 it will have kind of natural uh, filtration, uh, which is preserved uh, by uh, by this transformation. Because, uh, for example, the, uh, the lowest term it will be cycles which which are supported in, in this domain. Okay. Yeah, and then it doesn't change. And uh, so, so you see it preserved filtration, it also has identity on uh, diagonal, but, uh, but then it will be upper triangular matrix if you go to what happens cohomology, get low, uh, you get opposite filtration on cohomology. On homology, and on cohomology you get filtration uh, in, opposite, in the opposite way. Okay, so what is the conclusion of all this? Uh, mm. So, we g uh, given this finite set of critical values, uh, uh, and plus a mm, bunch of uh, Local systems on circles. You see that this cohomology, uh, local cohomology, depends on the argument and the form of local system on circle. Get kind of group with automorphisms. So we get local systems on S1, which is just exponent of i theta. So this local system is. Uh, H beta Zi theta for each i. Uh, and 
plus for any pair of i ordered pair of, of two indices, uh, or maybe just two distinct points on S, uh, singular set, uh, we get a, a map of uh, abelian groups H, B, Z, I, and direction dependent on two points. Uh, yeah, I do know this local system with same notation, just see. The theta e i prime is uh, oh, so, so maybe the conclusion. So, so what we get, we get a collection of local systems and and all this uh, in bunch of uh, non-trivial matrix elements in this algebra. Uh, mm, yeah, so eventually what you see is that you get uh, how many non-trivial elements it uh, will be for any pair of points. For any pair of, of ordered pair of points, you have unique di uh, directed lines which go through and then you get mm, this pair of matches. So we get this uh, uh, algebra data. No, but I don't uh, so uh, you are going from zi, so in the picture, like you have zi1 to zi2. Yes, yes, you get some operation from zi2 and go from zi2 to zi1, it should orient h, have, take minus h bar. i1 minus zi2 is like minus h bar. Ah, yeah, this is the yeah. convention that, that, that this is the h bar plus pi, yeah. so it's compatible, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's compatible, yeah. Yeah, so I get these things, uh, all this linear uh, algebra data, and the claim is, it's the same as uh, uh, it's um, uh, so there are no constraints on this. There's no constraints whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, 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 last time I explained it, uh, there was some kind of data for some constructible shift with are gamma equal to zero. It's, it's equivalent to this data. It's another description of the same data. It's a constructible shift on C with singularities in S with n R gamma of each component in fact of the shift is equal to zero. Yeah, so that's um, that's kind of uh, what topology is relevant for uh, our consideration. Yeah, so, uh, so the main thing that there are these uh, interesting operators, maybe called, uh, I don't know how term they call this operator. It will be usual shift. It will be both perverse shift and usual shift at the same time. Ah, so the, the cons this is the same as the perverse shift which have this property. Yes, yes. yes. With the normalization of perversity, yeah, yeah. which is. Yeah, with some normalization, yeah, maybe we should buy one from another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the main thing is what we describe is we describe kind of local system on circles and some maps and a lot of li linear maps. Uh, mm, what are these uh, things? It's maybe called this uh, operator something like T I J. I don't know T I A prime. And there's no constraints whatsoever on this thing. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's try to understand what are these maps. It's uh, just even kind of uh, more special situation. Uh, I assume that, uh, so I assume that my uh, thing is proper, no, no divisor, but I assume that uh, all uh, singular points, all critical points of F are isolated. And moreover, as I assume, there are holomorphic Morse points. Mm, what does it mean, holomorphic points? Yeah, so it's maybe called, called, so called P1, Pi, C in X, and F of Pi is equal to Zi, C in C. What does it mean that points is holomorphic? 
so, uh, so of course, derivative at uh, pi is vanish, and second derivative is non-degenerate quadratic form, uh, and it means that uh, there, there is some local coordinates. something like x1 to xn, where n is the dimension of my variety, uh, near points, so it's which given by uh, coordinates finished at this point, and function is sum of squares. Yeah, analytic, yeah, analytic, yeah. Yeah, I'll do analytic. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I s make this thing. Then, uh, in this situation, if we make this even special assumption, then this cohomology of pair uh, will be uh, is c concentrated in degree one. Yeah, there are, there are numbers. Yeah. Ah, plus the i, yes. plus x, maybe j, plus the i, yeah, right. It's, it's constant plus sum of squares, yeah. All right. Mm. So the cohomology is concentrated just in one degree, which is middle, and dimension is equal to the number of, maybe I assume, and I assume that all the i not equal to the j. Uh, here, all critical values are distinct, you're kind of Situation. So the dimension of cohomology will be number of critical values, and uh, this local cohomology mm, uh, uh, theta. It will be just in, in middle degree. In it will be just one-dimensional space, uh, one-dimensional lattice. So it, uh, it has kind of canonical basis. Defined up to sign, because the size the isomorphism is defined up to sign. Mm. So let me uh, explain this. Here. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, just very basic calculation. We have such a function, and. Uh, if you look on the definition, it's some cohomology of pair. What what will be this cohomology f b z i theta uh, uh, f beta b is for beta z i theta? It's the same as cohomology of a at the end of the day of a ball in C n. Let's say coordinates C n, and relative to the pair with coordinates x one x n, which are complex coordinates, uh, uh, modulus the uh, uh, hypersurface sum of x i square equal to epsilon times e i theta, and uh, mm, and mm, this is uh, uh, epsilon is very small, and uh, this complex quadric, its homotopy equivalent equivalent to a sphere. Uh, and uh, when all x i uh, up to rotation are, let's say, real numbers, this is small square, and this is contractible, it's homotopy equivalent to the disk, to the n-dimensional disk, uh, and uh, yeah, so this whole story, it's uh, isomorphic cohomology of pair disk and, and the sphere with integer coefficients, which is one-dimensional space in degree n. But identification with z depends on choice of orientation, of, uh, of the mm, fundamental chain, so there are really two choices. Choices uh, uh, it depends on orientation, this identification, and if you make a monodromy here, uh, this, uh, this argument C rotates, you get one parameter family of the things. The monodromy uh, is easy to calculate, is uh, multiplication by minus 1 to power n. So if, if n is odd, you cannot really choose orientation and 
uh, compatible ways with uh, its essential data. And then these operators, uh, whatever, uh, maybe I remove them, Tij, which I hit, hit, hit here, uh, but uh, get some operators. Tij are essentially integer numbers. It's one by one matrices. It's kind of one by uh, one integer matrix. So it may be called some n, uh, some n j, i non equal to j, and defined up to sign. Uh, the specifies fine, so we should think about orientation. Okay, so, so uh, the whole data in this case is given just a bunch of integer numbers for i non equal to j, how all these things glued together. Mm. Uh, and now I want to describe some meaning of nij. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's again uh, more convenient to think about homology instead of cohomology. Uh, uh, and uh, the claim is that it for h bar which doesn't belong to Stokes race. We have a basis of, uh, of uh, homology depending on h bar uh, of my xf uh, uh, corresponding to critical uh, defined up to each very elementary defined up to sense corresponding to uh, critical uh, points or critical values uh, and. Uh, uh, the basis can be re represented by something which is called uh, left shot symbols. Yeah, so, uh, so what are left shot symbols? Yeah, I'll be again put more and more constraints here. Uh, so, you know, assume X is uh, Keller. Uh, and uh, and pick kind of pick Keller metric. Uh, the Keller metric gives two things. It gives Riemannian metric, and it also gives symplectic structure. And. Uh, now we have uh, a holomorphic function divided by h bar. It also gives two uh, real functions. It gives function real part of h minus 1 f. It's holomorphic. And get imaginary part of h bar minus f. Uh, now, so we get uh, two different things. And, uh, now consider gradient, uh, now let's use left function and left structure. Consider gradient flow for real part of h1 minus 1 f. On the symplectic sides we can consider a different story. We consider Hamiltonian flow for imaginary part h minus 1. One of f, and that's uh, really just one second calculation shows it's just the same flow, same vector field. Uh, uh, on on your manifold, and that's really uh, uh, very remarkable. It's, it's, it implies that so that some corollary that. Uh, if consider trajectory of this gradient flow, uh, 
and map by my f map f to c. <coughs> trajectory will be some line in my manifold. It's to c. What we get, we get a horizontal line. Kind of maps to to positively oriented kind of oriented horizontal line. Uh, because uh, it's a Hamiltonian flow, it means that it preserves the imaginary part. So it means that it should go to horizontal line and real part will, will increase. Mm, you can see the... Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, 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 no. The, the Poisson bracket is something. No, but you are saying that the gradient flow of the real part is the same as Hamiltonian. Ah, for the imaginary part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's imaginary part is preserved and real part increases. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we define kind of left shift symbol depending on uh, on critical points and uh, direction theta is, uh, this is uh, left shift symbol. is, uh, maybe it's called stable manifold for, uh, uh, gr for the gradient flow. Uh, uh, Mm. Uh, uh, which has uh, points which are attracted to point pi. Uh, I already, uh, my, my theta is uh, argument of h bar. Uh, 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 mm. Mm. So, so, so just this, the set of points in, in x so that limit when time goes to plus infinity and I play this flow with time t of my point and the limit is pi. Yeah, so the claim is that this thing is diffeomorphic to Rn. Uh, why n? Uh, because a real part of h my, uh, is my function for which I make gradient flow uh, is a real Morse function, and uh, 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 with more singularities, and signature is n pluses and n minuses. It's two n real two n dimension manifold. And, uh, um, oh, so this, uh, so it looks like kind of R n, which maps to uh, mm. C and. If you look uh, how, how it will be the projection to, to C by F, it's kind of C with um, uh, of values of F, uh, you get, or maybe F divided by H bar, it's a Z bar divided by H bar, and uh, so the projection of the symbol is is a negative ray a starting point is a critical value. And, uh, and it's easy to see that the fibers are spheres, except uh, the tip when the fiber is a point. Uh, yeah. Uh, wh why, it, uh, why it happens? Because locally, near, near this point, you can use local coordinates and see that it's kind of standard picture in Morse theory. But then, if you follow along the line, uh, one can uh, do the following. The fibers of my map, uh, my map F, are also symplectic manifolds, uh, just restrict color form. And because it's part of some hypersurface, 
preimage of the ray, there is a connection. So they are canonically symplectomorphic to each other. And I just uh, tr uh, tr transport by this symplectomorphism and get fi fibers will be sphere, uh, sphere everywhere. Mm. Yeah, so that's the picture how it, uh, 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 how represent basis elements of this uh, local cohomology and get exponent uh, classes in uh, uh, large cohomology. Now again, assume that we, we are on a Stokes line. We have only two, only two critical values on a real line. Mm in x parallel to h bar and h bar mm, is on the Stokes line in its own plane. Yeah, so you get two uh, critical points like z i and z j. And uh, again I just repeat my picture what I had before. Uh, if I just move rotate a little bit h bar I get uh, 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 two uh, mm, uh, left shift symbols and rotate another way, I get just another pair of left shift symbols. Uh, mm, and the claim that, again, for generic Keller metric, Nij is uh, exactly number of uh, number counted with signs. I should take, take care about orientation of gradient lines of uh, my function uh, connecting <coughs> going from <coughs> pi to pj. Uh, uh, so how to again to understand it? Uh, yeah, if if I, uh, if I h bar is on Stokes lines, and after rotation I get uh, the i and the j have the same imaginary part, and uh, in principle one can imagine there are such uh, uh, the gradient lines static in the i can and and the j. Uh, so how to understand it? If you, if you, each bar is not on Stokes lines, then all imaginary parts are distinct. Uh, we don't have gradient lines, and it's something which should one should expect also from more theory because all uh, uh, more synthesis are equal to n, and it generically more lines go f when more syntax jump by one. So there should be no more lines at all, and it, this really happens because the imaginary parts are distinct. But if we have one parameter family of functions. Then uh, it's special values of, of this one parameter. You have m m m uh, this uh, gradient lines which connecting two points with the same Morse index, and that's exactly what happens uh, here. Uh, so you don't actually need Keller, right? This is perfectly okay. No, 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 no. For this, you need Keller to t to say that's gradient and Hamilton. Uh, but it's compatible synthetic structure, compa compatible almost complex structure. But they have complex structure already. Yeah. Complex yeah, yeah. So it's it's essentially uh, the picture. What is Nij? But one can. Uh, um, what did you s you said something about connecting? Can you repeat what you said about connecting points of different or the same? Yeah. Both index. No, in, yeah, you can forget about complex geometry. You have real manifold with remaining metric and a function and with more function. Then it's, it's everything is generic. Then you have only. Uh, can have only gradient lines connecting points when uh, uh, Morse index strictly decreases. Yeah, yes. yeah. We should be for the same Morse index. You should have no uh, no gradient lines at all, and you isolate it when it jumps by one, and one parameter families for jumps by two, and so on. Yeah. But now, if you have one parameter family of functions, then for special values of parameters, uh, this uh, uh, Morse uh, lines will will connect uh, two points with the same Morse index. Yeah, and here it's what's going on. We have all points with the same Morse index and have one parameter family because we rotate uh, 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 variable h bar. 
as I remember in most theory, they also have this thing in the real case that you can order the values <coughs> according to the index somehow. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it's it's not really related to the story. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of equivalent things because it's a little bit hard to de decipher what is counting with science here. Uh, uh, equivalent description I can just say is the following: you just again to have maybe say two z i z j. In fact, it works for many points. Um, what you do, uh, you um, consider. Uh, uh, this left shot symbol which goes to one direction, which projects ex actually to some ray. But now, from, from another point, you mm, uh, shot uh, this uh, left shot symbol in kind of almost opposite direction. And then you get two maybe non compact <coughs> manifolds, but which intersect by compact in a compact part. And then you get a well defined intersection number. So it's stable under deformation. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, it's the same description. This intersection number is the same NIJ. Which is, yeah, yeah, it's kind of more convenient to uh, think in this way. It's, yeah, it's easy to prove, yeah. yeah. This, this is to do with the timber for the other yeah, type yeah. of forms, yeah. which are dual. Yeah, yes, yes. duality and you use it to. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah, maybe just uh, just to be even more concrete. I assume that X is just uh, the sign. Also. Sorry, we have intersection number. It depends on the yeah. It's sign. You should ori orient this uh, because it's actually one-dimensional spaces. It's a, it's a, it's a basis up to a sign. You should orient these things. Yeah, yeah some uh, story. Yeah, no. I just want to to be very concrete. Suppose X is just uh, C with and f is a generic polynomial of a degree d, at least two, uh, and to take generic angle theta. Uh, so we get a basis up to sine of first homology, because there's no other homology here, xf. And uh, how it looks like, so mm. in C we just draw, for example, D is equal 5 here, draw uh, something like uh, uh, domains when real part of F is uh, negative, uh, in very far to each other. Then you get some, and then what you get, you get something like this left shift timbles will be certain disjoint uh, 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 lines will be because then Cologne just will be real line embedded in the things and uh, passing through through uh, critical points of F. So, so these are zeros. Uh, the things are um, zeros of of derivative of polynomial, and they form some something dual to planar tree. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's uh, basic story. Uh, uh, yeah, just to get concrete feeling, what is going on? Uh, uh, in my uh, first lecture, I explained most general situation. We get variety. Maybe map is not compact, and you get some divisor. So the consider homology of pairs, and the whole thing uh, extends to this uh, story it's because it's really topology here. Nothing about complex geometry. Okay, yeah, so the, uh, the conclusion is that there is a kind of uh, typically um, left shift symbols and maybe some more complicated things if uh, critical points are uh, more complicated. Now I just want mm. yeah, so we'll, uh, let's keep the same uh, assumptions. Uh, 
it will be kind of uh, this is f is proper, and you get a divisor is empty, so we don't have to speak about the boundary, and uh, and all singularities are, are holomorphic morphs, and all critical values are distinct. So now pick some holomorphic. Oh, picture algebraic volume form by volume and n is dimension before uh, then differently uh, I get a class in the RAM homology so uh, D plus one of HDF is equal to zero because both differential form is zero because there's no n plus one form and this is also to zero so it defines a cohomology class in in this drum I think for any h bar uh, and it's comparison isomorphism uh, which I talk about with Betty the uh, Betty it's uh, both sound just to calculating of some integrals we get e i of h bar is equal to integral over my exponent of my polynomial divided by volume of element and integrate over left shift symbol. Mm. Plus pi. Um, oh, so the integral is converged. Uh, so you get a bunch of, uh, uh, it's for each uh, critical value, so you get a function. But this function is holomorphic outside of Stokes race. It's actually defined when h bar is not to stock race. What do you want under the integral side? Uh, uh, left shot symbol. Ah. Uh, and I, I go to the direction. Uh, whatever. Negative direction. Uh, on h bar belongs to C. Minus union of stock sector, stock race. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah. So get not uh, in sense one get not one function but many functions because we got many sectors, but each functions admits a analytic continuation. Each kind of sector uh, ad, uh, admits analytic continuation to. Uh, to universal cover of C star. Uh, now the picture is uh, something like this. You get some critical values. And if you want to calculate uh, integral, you integrate over pullback or left timbles with which, uh, which is lift of this of some ray. But now we start to rotate H bar. What you do, you just eventually uh, take if you go some path in the h-bar plane, you just lift crisp uh, corresponding uh, thing. Yeah, so it clearly admits an analytic con continuation. Mm. Uh, also, let me make some another assumption uh, that uh, there is no line connecting uh, three points, at least three, uh, at most, uh, at least three points in S. Uh, so it means that equivalent that number of Stokes rays is m times m mi minus one, where m is the number of critical values. So you, so you see you get a really huge collection, you get something like m times m minus 1 functions. So as we assume that there is only one critical point above everything. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 I forgot to write it, yeah. Yeah, so you get something like cubic, cubically depending on m number of functions. 
because uh, they have many, many sectors and functors ha function has index i. Mm. Now, no, how is no? I don't understand. So you have the number of mm. stocks range not m not bigger than three. M no. Not m minus one. So you have set. This is the three. number of sectors. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then each of them has such and such number of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you get plenty of kind of different functions which I denote by one function defined in disjoint union, but in, f in real life it's many functions. Mm. And now, if I have a, again, uh, uh, this uh, situation when the i goes to, let's say, zj, uh, let's not like this, so, so we have the same picture. We see if we, if we cross the corresponding stocks race, uh, uh, cross the ray, each bar goes to this direction, uh, then the uh, the ij, which is a uh, small inter integral, does not jump. It's, uh, it's uh, analytically continuous across the ray, does not jump. And, and ii goes to ii, again, plus, uh, uh, depending on the concentration, uh, it's uh, replaced by, uh, it jumps by um, this function j. Okay, now define kind of modified functions of H bar. Uh, yeah, I divide by what I expect for quadratic form without putting discriminant determinant of quadratic form times I H bar. And you get some uh, 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 functions, uh, and the claim that it's asymptotic. In it's asymptotic, yeah, asymptotic in Hbargo, in this sector, yeah. Uh, so you get some series. Uh, yeah, in principle, it depends on the sector. But the claim it doesn't depend on the sector. You'll see it in a second. Uh, 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 it's. Uh, is it uh, asymptotic in a uh, in a closed subsector or in the whole sector? It's actually asymptotic in some uh, uh, larger sector, uh, strictly larger sector. Because of the analytic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so we just modify, rescale the things. So we, what we have, we have this jump of gj modified is zero, and jump of ii modified is, uh, okay, this is nij. Now we take minus the thing times ii modified. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this I, I modified jumps by this, uh, by, by this expression. But uh, uh, this thing has a trivial asymptotic expansion. It's functions like exponent 1 over x. It has trivial zero Taylor expansion. Uh, so you see that uh, these coefficients do not change. In fact, it's easy to see that one can collate it purely uh, uh, algebraically uh, using formal power ex expansion and kind of Feynman graphs. Uh, one can calculate them purely algebraically. Mm. What do you mean algebraically? There is some topology also. No, no, no. There's no topology involved here. To calculate this, this series, uh, you can do uh, Use algebraic geometry if your variety defined over number filters, it'll be serious. Okay, you don't need any, uh, yeah, any <coughs> coming from the complex topology. No, 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 it's completely formal. Uh, uh, think. Mm. And the conclusion is that we have 
this all integrals uh, gives a solution of some Riemann Hilbert problem. Uh, I'll explain what, what is this, this Riemann Hilbert problem. It, uh, the input for this Riemann Hilbert problem is, is my collection of S of this Zi and C and collection of maybe just write Z1, Zm, like, like order them, and and then you get some integers. And I kind of uh, put under the, uh, under the regs the question about orientation, so it's up to sign issues. Uh, now, if you get just collection of complex numbers and integers, then we get a holomorphic m-dimensional bundle, vector bundle on C. On C, uh, the coordinates are denoted by h bar, and uh, the, uh, by definition, it will be the following: the sections of this bundle, global sections, will be collections of of functions psi i of h bar uh, uh, where h bar belongs to c minus stock sectors stocks rays kind of like my integrals admitic asymptotic uh, which admits asymptotic expansion Yes, h bar goes to zero, and uh, jump is given by the same formula. In this situation, uh, kind of in this situation, uh, which I explain here, uh, jump of uh, if you go across this uh, Stokes line, so I, uh, psi j goes to psi j, and psi i goes to psi i plus n i j psi j. Ah, multiplied by this uh, exponential factor. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, some question which has, you can forget about your variety, about uh, things, you just have this data, uh, in uh, complex numbers and integer numbers, and you get construct a vector bundle, Helmholtz vector bundle. And there is explicit trivialization of this bundle, and I'll write your formula in a second, on in open disk, uh, where h bar is, uh, uh, and this r, uh, of radius r, where r is, will be very small, and uh, this formula I learned from, no, I, I described what is the section of the bundle. Global section, or all can take in neighborhood. Is it algebraic bundle or holomorphic? It's holomorphic vector bundle. Okay, so. I, I describe what is a holomorphic, I describe this bundle in terms of what is this model of its sections. Okay, but you have to uh, Yeah, I put. Ah, yeah. so let's say on every open set in C, the, the you mean you give yeah, yeah. The section on this. Yes, yes, yeah. You, you can restrict the question. Yeah, the main. You describe the, this, this, this bundle outside of zero by this jump formula. But what is the. the what kind of asymptotic expansion you. No, I, I, need, I need this. Uh, I wasn't a bit sloppy. I said that it's, it's extend to open. Uh, uh, the functions are in Stokes sectors, but actually they extend it to some um, larger sectors. And I admit it's asymptotic expansions uh, within uh, in of this form. Ah, of the extension also. Yes. But so it's clear what the bundle maybe is outside zero, but it's zero. Yeah, it's yeah, that's exactly this whole, yeah, it's not clear what this bundle is zero, yeah. What is the fiber at zero? But is it clear that it is really a bundle? Yeah, it's a bit, uh, yeah, it's not totally clear, but uh, let me skip it, yeah. Uh, because functions are really, uh, uh, the, the thing that this functions has zero Taylor expansion, it's, uh, it could be any infinity functions with zero Taylor expansion. One can work out that you get still holomorphic bundle. Yeah. Uh, maybe is it related to the theory of uh, 
there is a theory of, of classifying holomorphic connections. Is it related to? It's related, yeah, but it's more general, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so those, uh, no, I'll write now write a formula and then I think your questions will be answered. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, the formula, what is the trivialization of this bundle? And uh, I learned it from uh, some paper of Gajotu Muranetsky. Uh, uh, um, mm, so what they propose, they propose a base of sections. Uh, which called up psi, psi i for i from one to m. Um, ah, so so it what what means the section of bundles? So, so it means that you have uh, some functions phi i j of h bar, where h bar belongs to c minus m times m plus one raise. <laughs> you have many many uh, holomorphic functions. So this thanks for this jump property. And mm. now, now write the formula. The formula, it's maybe there's some small mistakes with signs, but basically it's correct. I won't write the value of functions of uh, formula. First of all, it's delta ij. So, so if there's no jumps, it will be just standard basis and plus sum over all n greater than 1 and take sum over all sequences of indices uh, uh, such as no, 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 uh, two subsequent sequences are distinct but they can repeat it after uh, some intervals. Now I take n i zero, n one, n i one, i two. Again, okay, one should take it. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, maybe some. Okay, let's call it k. Uh, and i k minus one i k divided by two pi and multiplied by certain integral. And the integral is like this. You take Sorry? How does it depend on H bar? Last factor. Last? Ah, the last factor. Last guy, yeah. yeah and, and where is the integration? That means int integration is the following. Is this HL belongs to Z i L plus one minus Z i L multiplied by uh, positive numbers. Uh, uh, maybe strictly positive numbers and H L less than R. Yeah, well, that's a, uh, so the form uh, H L runs to some interval, some interval of length R. And mm. and if you, yeah, first mm. formula, it's very easy. To, okay, we forget convergence conditions that it uh, satisfies the jump formula because you integrate. Uh, if you jump the h, uh, the j h, you get integrate a little bit 
one set and another set. So it means that you substitute h bar h, k, h, h equal to h k, and you go to the previous expression. Yeah, so it's um, uh, definitely uh, satisfy the, uh, uh, the formula. And the, when the r is very small, uh, the things in, in the numerator will be so 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 small that it will be guarantee convergence of the whole sum. Yeah, one can make. So you, you sum over h uh, in this? No, no, it's inter integral of h. h. Yeah, in, uh, h, h, h l runs through some interval. And the integral converges in the usual sense? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, because uh, w what happens here, you get exponent minus positive number, positive real number. And in the denominator, you get h bar, but different h bar lies in different uh, uh, rays. Yes. And, uh, and to get a little bit of small denominator, but, but this again in, in numerator, it's, uh, uh, you get polynomial growth from d denominator, but the numerator is <coughs> exponentially decay. Decay, so. So essentially, it's real. Well, the it, uh, yeah, here it's a real number, real positive numbers, and very, very small when h bar close to zero. And the poles in, in, in the numerator get something big only if, if all points close to, z to zero. Okay. Convergence of each integral is obvious, but the convergence of the whole series. Yeah, one can estimate the norms. Yeah, it's b some, f some work here, of course, but. Uh, Z then the R small enough for this? Yes, you need R small enough for this because... Mm, for the series or for not for the integral? No, no some over, some, some over, for some over K, you, I think you need uh, R small enough because otherwise it will be like geometric progression which you do not control. Yeah, maybe I s make a small break, something like five between five and ten minutes and then continue. Okay. Yeah, maybe just s slowly continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we get uh, this bunch of sections here. Yeah. Or maybe I just exchange uh, whatever entry notation. Uh, yeah, so we get many things which are sections of my bu uh, bundle and define M is uh, I just put uh, as a column vector, say, 1, say, 2, and so on, say, m. Uh, so what is it? It's uh, g l m c valued function, uh, again, on h bar, which it doesn't, on of h bar, which is c minus sectors. Uh, on sectors, and mm. the uh, limit of this function is its identity matrix, uh, because uh, yeah, the leading term is delta, and the rest will be exponentially small. And when I consider jump, uh, then m goes to uh, up or low triangular depends on uh, uh, ah it's jump by matrix which is sorry yeah 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 sorry I just started uh, I repeat so I have um, my uh, explicit uh, s sections in a small disk and I form them together as uh, the columns of s of uh, some together form a square matrix uh, and with JLN valued matrix with a limit equal to 1. And when I consider jump, if I cross the array, it means that I multiply matrix, I think, maybe on the left, I hope. And at ij place, uh, what I put here at ij place, uh, I put uh, this nij, this exponentially small correction, which I... <laughs> It has an asymptotic expansion. It also has asymptotic expansion, and uh, uh, so only yeah, it, it, you'll just see it in in a second. Mm. And I did kind of have i uh, is uh, uh, 
it will be just a cm valued function on h bar belonging to union of sectors. Uh, and the jump of uh, uh, i bar it's, it's essentially the same. It's such say the same jump formula. Uh, so the conclusion is that if I take Kinnear's matrix multiplied by i, it has no jumps. And then this means it will be holomorphic c to power m valued function. Okay. Sorry? On the disk, yeah. Sorry? E modified, yeah, it's modified, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. So first it is on the punctual disk, but then you can use the expansion. Because it has, it has uh, trivial, uh, it has um, asymptotic expansion, so it definitely. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but now what happens with, let's look on asymptotic, uh, on asymptotic expansions more carefully. You get some formal power series. Again, uh, this statistical expansion don't depends on the rate, so it's, uh, which belongs to JLM. It's a formal power series, and you get I formal which belongs to Cm, tens ring C of h bar. Yeah, uh, these things can be calculated algebraically using uh, my, my variety. And this is some universal question which should be studied using the same inter integrals. Mm. Uh, then, because, uh, then we see that m minus asymptotic expansion of m minus inverse i is a minus inverse formal times i formal. Mm. And uh, so if you calculate this formal things, we see that because it's analytic, it should be convergent things. So it's automatically convergent for h less than r. Uh, and so, we c uh, if you, uh, so without calculating integrals, we can uh, uh, calculate it just because we calculate the series and take the sum. And now, uh, uh, and now we see that uh, what is a i at h bar? It's m of h bar. It's something uh, dip, uh, depends only on this data, uh, Stokes data on z i j, z i and n i j, multiplied by convergent. Uh, sum of a formal power series which we calculate uh, uh, um, for uh, algebraically. Yeah, so it's um, mm, uh, yeah, so it's pretty remarkable, and one can presumably can make a kind of computer pro program to calculate integrals without calculating integrals in a sense. So we. Uh, we, uh, what about the, the M? You said that the M formal is asymptotic. Yeah, because yeah, this is, uh, 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 there is some certain M. Also, this is algebraic. No, 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 no. It's it needs to calculate these integrals. If you consider uh, terms of asymptotic inspection h bar, it will be some it, it complicated iterated integrals. Okay, so this is not. A yeah, but it's not related to original variety in the function. It's related only to these points and, and the i and i j. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in in, in a sense, uh, one can be very very optimistic and hope that it's. Uh, can be used in a uh, quantum field theory. Uh, no, just it's, uh, I will maybe go to, uh, will be not, uh, if you consider some uh, Feynman integral, uh, if you don't know what, what is going on, it's infinite dimensional integral, what are cycles, but, uh, but we can calculate what are critical values of the action or maybe complexified things, solving classical question. This Nij will be some number of instantons, uh, that has to be very good, sorry, because usually the uh, expansion every time will be infinite. In generally, quantum field theory. Ah, no, so of course, no. You get also renormalization re for, for, for 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 formal power series, and so on. Yeah, but but the whole story is very general. It can generalize to everything, to arbitrary case and maybe not proper and so on. Uh, the whole uh, business and. Uh, the, the only difference that I, I modified will be not series in H, but will be in general, mm, maybe have Laurent series, maybe in fractional power of H, of certain whatever K, and polynomials in a logarithm of H bar. Yeah, so it's, that's the only, uh, in, in general case, uh, you get um, this a little bit more tricky. Mm. Story. Yeah. Yeah, and now I will be pretty brief. So what did you write? What is I I mod? Uh, this modified things which are, uh, uh, are uh, when we have known as a little, yeah, we can see the pairing between the Ram and Betty, and uh, then we get. And where do you have in your thing, where do you have the K and the log A? No. K, no, K for some K. Some integer K. It's some ramification. Uh, yeah, mo some monodromy could be quasi unipotent and so on. Yeah. yeah Usually, the quantum field theory results are not convergent subs. No, the, no, no. Formal series are not convergent. Now, what I explained to you, you get divergent series, but this universal ways you you made them convergent. Right. So what I'm saying is, it's uh, as far as I understand, the generic quantum field theory cannot make it. No, at least what I explained in my lectures, one can do it uh, in, in series up to three dimensions. In, yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. That's, that's so we can think of this as flat sections of some dimension? In this, in this, uh, in this the transformations in monodromics of some dimension? I don't know. No. Yeah, maybe, yeah, so I have maybe half an hour time, yeah. The uh, last part of my lecture today will be generalization to uh, closed one forms. Yeah, so uh, my original situation was that I have smooth variety, divisible with normal crossing and some function. And I will generalize it to this uh, setup and get variety divisor and one form, algebraic one form on X, which is closed. Yeah, so think uh, if we get a function, just take differential function. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's all the uh, same story. So for H bar non equal to zero, one can make the RAM cohomology depending on H bar is the alpha will be I, I just repeat the definition because in the definition I use uh, omega X D D plus one H bar alpha. Okay. 
uh, and what is omega x d? I, I used this notation last time. It's a uh, uh, sheaf of forms whose restriction to any to any component of divisor d is equal to zero. Uh, kind of nature forms we use to come all draft pairs, and there is some kind of funny curious uh, equality uh, that omega x d. Uh, in fact, one does have to introduce this new notation, but one can use standard notation of log forms, and you can and you twist it by functions vanishing in divisor d. Yeah, it's yeah. Just one can maybe to understand what's going on. Let's imagine an x is kind of c with coordinate x contains d with the point x equal to zero. Then if you consider omega x d global sections of omega x d, you get uh, polynomials vanishing in zero and one forms. And if you consider log forms. You get just polynomials on x and cx multiplied dx over x. And if you uh, multiply by x, you get uh, the same mm, 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 shifts. Yeah. Okay, um, so the claim it's easy exercise in resolution of singularity that there exists algebraic compactification x bar containing x and tangent x bar uh, has normal crossing divisor whose components are divided into four groups. Divisor I will note. So I borrow part of notation from my previous lecture, I get kind of horizontal and vertical part when I get a function. Uh, so what is this relation? So there are four different devices all formed together normal crossing. X is X bar minus D horizontal union D logarithmic union D vertical. And D is uh, X intersect with D bar. So it's contained. D, it sits inside, and what are conditions? It's uh, uh, constraints. It's locally in analytic topology, not in the risky topology. Uh, one can uh, have the following: form alpha is sum of three terms. Uh, where a regular is a regular form, has no poles, uh, all forms are closed. Uh, so a log a logarithm um, a logarithm is uh, locally can be written as a sum c i d log z i, where c i are non-zero complex numbers and the i equal to zero are equations uh, for uh, logarithmic part of the divisor. So that's why it's denoted by log this part of the divisor. And uh, uh, what is I, I inf I infinite? It's locally differential of some function. Uh, and function is some constant non equal to zero divided by product of some other indices j z j to so maybe some n j times one plus o one 
um, where nj are uh, strictly bigger than zero, and the G, uh, product of zj equal to zero is locally equation for d uh, to a vertical. Yeah, if it will be, uh, uh, if my uh, one form is differential of a function, uh, this part is uh, absent and it. It's essentially uh, the composition which I used in my last talk. And formal locally cannot be uh, necessary uh, exact because if you, if you add compactifier by devices normal crossing, it should can have some non-trivial periods along devices. So that means I should correct it by this, uh, this part. And those things are uniquely characterized in some way? Mm, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It, uh, if you are given the compactification. No, 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 one can fight. Uh, it's not every compactification. No, no, but suppose you have a compactification which is good. Yeah. Of course, the D bar is a, is a closure of what you have so. But the, the other, the, the composition of the other start to the Yeah, no, the, the H is something which you throw away, but it's the form is, has no zeros, no, no poles at all. Ah, form, uh, it's, it's form is, uh, 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 ah, sorry, I forgot to say that form is, where is, where, where is the form? Is on, uh, uh, I mean, one closed, uh, you can see the x bar uh, minus d log and d, d vertical. Okay, so you look locally at uh, alpha, and now it behaves analytically in the yeah. point and yeah. you, you will construct your stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, in my last uh, uh, talk last week, I said that it's d bar and d, uh, 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 d horizontal shouldn't intersect. It was uh, unnecessary condition, so everything works when without any constraints. Okay. No, uh, in my last talk, I just assumed that these two things do not intersect, and it's, it, it, was, it was too cautious. It's everything works fine in spawn correct duality in all case. And when you write your, <coughs> in the last line on the blackboard, alpha is in omega ones, what is the subscript? No, on the, mid on the middle, uh, go down, huh? what is the subscript of omega one? Closed. Sorry, yeah, it's my back to writing. Yeah, this, uh, then the, this uh, the in order to calculate uh, ram homology, what should we do? We can use this compactification. We have inclusion of x uh, mm, mm, to x check. Uh, and we put a little bit, yeah. We consider, uh, uh, we can calculate cohomology using uh, direct image on x bar. And what we get here, we get omega x bar. Yeah, this is instead of writing it's omega x bar d. It's kind of this funny notation. And then I allow poles of arbitrary order on d horizontal plus d log as the, the vertical. Yeah, the star, I, I remind you, it means it's poles of arbitrary order, finite order. And it contains a subshift. Subshift, uh, which I, uh, in order to, uh, I just denote by omega tilde dot, and depends on all the things, but what is it? It's this, this uh, locally, it's considered forms, on x bar, but we, uh, which are logarithmic everywhere. At my minus d bar, so it says it's actually not logarithmic forms, but vanishing one. And such that if you multiply by alpha uh, this form, it belongs to the same thing. Yeah, so it's, it's some uh, uh, complex which I proposed about a year ago f in case of functions, but it works the same for forms. 
So I get subshift, and in fact, it is a, a vector bundle, which is not terribly obvious. It's clear that it's torsion free shift as a subshift of vector bundle. But in fact, it's a vector bundle. And uh, uh, so there is a theorem, just you can take it locally, this omega tilde with differential uh, uh, d plus alpha h bar maps to this star, that's d with differential d plus alpha h bar induces a, induces a quasi-isomorphism. One should check uh, something at infinity that could get some acyclic complexes. So it means it can replace replaced by some uh, something much smaller. And ah, it's actually it's quite as but here it's a really funny con constraint here for h bar, which doesn't belong to finite union over i, which is a com component of d log. Of what I consider. Uh, I, 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 in this h bar plane, it should remove finitely many kind of inverse arithmetic progressions uh, going to zero, strictly positive. I, yeah, it's really a local calculation. You uh, check it's quasi isomorphism, you check some associated gradient, and then you see that sometimes it fails. Yeah, so we get this uh, mm, uh, re reduction to some nice. Uh, finite dimensional problem except this finitely many arithmetic progression in each in universe. The, the union you write i is in the, in the component? Uh, are components of d, d logarithmic. For each component I get some number, which will, will be residue, residue of my one form along this component. See i is integral of alpha of some uh, loop uh, surrounding uh, uh, corresponding components. It's, it's a residue. Mm. Yeah, so it's pretty, uh, really a s small local calculation. Uh, yeah, in fact, I can just show uh, wh where this condition uh, looks for. Kind of sample calculation is the following. Uh, so imagine that you get x equal to 0. It's uh, in just in one variable. It's equation for uh, this logarithmic guy. Uh, so uh, you can see the c star. It's my x. and more or less, and C is a compactification. What do you think alpha? A, a small loop uh, surrounding or residue of one form, close one form on the divisor. Yeah, so uh, when we consider a uh, differential compactified story, we get something like this. And xn to power n goes to n plus c divided by h bar xn dx over x. But now we can uh, extend it. Uh, it's something like i star. And this is something like omega tilde. Uh, we get uh, Laurent polynomials with same differential. So it means that we allow n now uh, arbitrary integer. And you see that you get multiplication by 0 only if c divided by h bar is positive integer. Yeah, so that's mm, 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 basic calculation. So one should have in the quasi isomorphism some exceptions. Uh, now, what about comparison theorems between kind of what does mean we take integrals and so on? Uh, kind of there's a global comparison theorem. Uh, between Betty and uh, between Betty and Deram, uh, 
uh, it is the following. So this H DRAM H bar X D alpha X D alpha is canonically isomorphic to mm, H beta H bar X D alpha. Uh, which is uh, I'll kind of write very roughly uh, what is going on. Mm. We have this uh, compactification with four types of divisors, and we consider x zero will be x bar minus all four divisors which we have here. D bar, D H, D log, and the vertical. It's some open, uh, the risky open some variety, and we add real boundary to it. Add real boundary using real blow ups. Get manifold with corners. And uh, this uh, H beta can be identified with homology of. Uh, you, you add boundary to this open variety, it's kind of real analytic construction, and get certain sub. In certain domain, pair domain, certain domain in the boundary. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, and but but not yet. And you take take this coefficients not in Z but in local system associated to alpha di divided by H bar. And what does means this? What is this local system uh, on x uh, on x zero? Uh, you can see the shift of solutions of the equation of the thing. You get closed one form. Uh, so you get a local system which depends on h bar of rank one. But h x zero is homotopy equivalent to, to this real compactification. So you just consider uh, extent as a local system to x zero. And the domain, uh, it's something similar to what I described you last time. You just look on these divisors and you add appropriate boundaries mm, yeah. where your chains should have boundary. Sorry? No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's considered sheaf of functions. Uh, locally, you don't have solutions, so get a represent uh, rank one local system. This, this, you consider this flat connection on rank one local system. Yeah. It, 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 should, it should be kind of topological. It's topological, but but uh, but uh, but here uh, uh, you get some periods of one form alpha. And uh, yeah, and consider local system with monodromy given by exponent of periods. It's solutions of this. Uh, no, I can see the connection. I can see the connection. I can see the flat connection. Flat connection on trivial bundle. What did you say? You add real what? Real boundary? Yeah, add real boundary. Yeah, X0 will be open manifold and add to it real boundary without changing homotopy type. Yeah, and then take some appropriate domain. Why disappeared, but instead of phi now, we get the periods of uh, connection. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. You need only in integrals of uh, this one form. That's it, and I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So it's really easy uh, statement. Yeah. It's. Sorry. What was the relation with the thing in the box C X plus C D X over X? What was the? Ah no no no! I just explain. I, I just explain why it needs these exceptions. Why this isomorphism breaks. No, no, here I reduced to some finite dimensional problem. It's kind of unrelated. Uh, okay. Ah, the quasi is a morphism. Yeah, breaks when h bar is, is in this finitely many arithmetic progressions. So, to understand how to the exact form you get this topology of story with the inbox and other No, it's another story. No, I didn't explain to you, I explained some global DRAM crystal. Yeah. So then the exact form is not a special case of flow for that. Yeah? No, 
exact form of special. Alpha is the DF, you, you don't get the previous definition. Sorry? If, if alpha is a differential. No, you get the previous definition because you get trivial local system. No, if alpha is def, you get the same, same definition because the system will be canonically trivialized. Sorry? We have not defined integral yet. No, integral will be pairing between is this isomorphism. Uh, how you look on a basis, it will be integrals. No, I mean exponential integral we have not defined. Uh, Analog of exponential of f divided by h bar. Yeah, one can define. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't define it yet. Yeah. Compared to, yeah, you just said that it's like previous case. It's uh, completely similar, yeah, but. Mm, yeah, but uh, just. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, really so you don't need to invert? I mean, you don't need to locally write it a, as a D5? Yeah, of course, you can lo locally write as D5, yeah. And then you repeat the previous part. Yeah, so, yeah, sure, yeah. No, but, no, but this uh, uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a bit. I don't have really much time to say it properly. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll next lecture say it properly. But a uh, um, rough picture is the following. Again, assume. No, just to get to get. A, uh, feeling what, what what will go on. Assume that uh, alpha equal to zero are isolated points. Isolated at Morse points. Because uh, near, uh, near any point you can write as differential, isolated Morse points. Mm. And you fix uh, generic theta, you fix theta, and take alpha uh, theta and uh, uh, its function. Uh, it's again one form on X, and then go to universal cover. Oh no no by 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 uh, H bar uh, theta will be maybe uh, okay. what what I really mean H bar will be R times E theta something like this. Yeah, you go to uni to the universal cover. On the universal cover, this alpha h bar will be differential of a function. Um, but now, if you fix a, a point, uh, now we can draw left shift symbols. Yeah, it's actually it's not clear whether the thing is really well defined because it's uh, non-compact uh, variety, and if you project to original variety, you get everywhere dense uh, uh, maybe a uh, thing. And how to write integrals? Yeah, you ask me for example how to write integrals. You can see the again top degree form on X, and uh, then you get pulled back the form on, on the timbal and function you normalize such that function is equal to zero at the tip of the timbal. This unique normalization. And then if you consider the exponent of f divided by h bar, it will be real uh, uh, real numbers which tends to minus infinity very fast. And then you can try to integrate I say things over over symbols. Uh, yeah, so there's a really question why these integrals are convergent and uh, why it doesn't depend on choice of Keller metric when you define timbles. Yeah, so there are really host of questions. But uh, And uh, here I, I think that actually things will be diverged if h bars is sufficiently large uh, by some kind of entropy uh, reasons for, some, for the flow. Uh, because when you, when you make these timbles, you kind of make a flow on your manifold uh, using Keller metric and one form. And the, the spheres, uh, if you apply the flow, uh, the volume should can grow exponentially. But one can uh, <coughs> bound the order of exponent, and then for each bar small enough, you get convergent uh, stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, actually, I've properly started in, in one week here. Yeah, this. Okay, but, but then comparison the theorem is not the theorem. It's conjecture. It's comparison conjecture. It's will be some kind of conjecture that. Uh, uh, this global beta homology is equal to direct sum of local beta homology. 
Can you announce a little more about next lecture, what it will be there? Uh, yeah, and then I will go to uh, infinite dimensional integrals. Still zero forms and one forms, or you will... No, one forms on infinite dimensional spaces, like... Loop spaces? Loop spaces, yeah, I get column... Quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, yeah, go to quantum mechanics and, yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Quantum integrals. Yeah. I don't know, no, no. it will be quantum mechanics, yeah, in the proper... So, instead of alpha, what, PDQ or something? P PDQ, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, integral of PDQ of, uh, uh, no, I consider DP integral of two forms of a loop. Of a two forms of integrate of a loop, I get one form space of loops, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think I should stop. So the, the, the thing that you had about the comparison of topological, of, of the Dirac-Comor and beta comor you first studied it for a function. Yeah. And now you say there is a similar thing for alpha? Or yes, yes, for alpha, yeah. Global, for homology, when you use something at infinity, Homology of pair at infinity. Ah, but, the, but you said that the previous one was proved and the one for alpha is more difficult? It's not difficult as well, yeah, it's very easy. It's, it's very easy, yeah. It's ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's like for functions, yeah. So what, what is easier? No, no, compare the RAM homology and, uh, and uh, global Betty homology, you use this stuff, I think. It's, uh, you, you use uh, uh, this shift, which is uh, kind of... Uh, and and the here can use analytic topology and, uh, because it's funny. Something is conjecture? No. no, no, conjecture, it's other stuff, it's relation, like left shoot timbles. I, I have, in, uh, in my, f t t one hour ago, I spoke about isomorphism, beta homology with some of yeah. things of critical values. And for one form, so it's, uh, one can formulate the same sta sta yeah. statement, but it's um, analytically more challenging, yeah, I think it's. No, actually, I'll start technique next time, yeah. I, I'm a little upset that the bit earlier that you seen that you have a manipulation and you obtain uh, a convergent yeah. uh, h-bar expansion. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's a non-trivial expansion, I'm upset because I don't see how you can obtain uh, non-trivial uh, uh, expansions in, in such calculations. No, no, because there are the iterated integrals. And uh, they, 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 they lead to some kind of form of power series which is not related to original uh, details. Okay, and I see that. Uh, yeah. You're sure that your series will not be trivial? No, 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 definitely. And this algebra is computable still? No, 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 this is the direct integrals. I don't know how to calculate them, okay. even numerically, yeah. It's, it's, it's oh, yes. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not algebraic story, unfortunately, yes. It's, yeah, there are transcendental numbers, yeah. Suppose you take the simplest integral, the, the integral that defines the array function. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you do all this explicitly or not? No, no, this iterative integral is something which should be calculated once for all, but it's but not. But you cannot, even for the array case, you cannot. No, no. no. Sir? Yeah. No, 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 but still one should, it will be infinite sum of iterative oh, integrals. Uh, no. No. Uh, how uh, Betty homology is defined when for this one form? Yeah, you know, essentially, uh, uh, model of this logarithm equations, uh, y you locally it's represented as differential of a function. Yes. And you do the same pair f as for, for the case of function. But uh, f minus 1 still makes sense? F, what is f minus 1? Inverse. Yeah, inverse. It's, yeah, of course, locally, yeah, but you add it to the boundary. Uh, when we consider f minus, when at real boundary, you consider f minus infinity, it's a subset of the boundary, yes. So we do under universal cover? No, 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 it's not a universal cover. You do on variety on x bar, yeah. yeah. Ah, but you have to define a part of the boundary and you don't have the function, you just have the problem. Yeah, just part of the boundary, I don't need to function at all, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I think I should leave now. So. <laughs>